This is my Minecraft survival world in the 1.20 update. And so far we have built a ton of really cool builds all around our world, but we don't really have anybody to share them with. Which is why in this episode, my plan is to build a villager breeder. That way we can have a ton of villagers that we can start putting in these buildings so that we can have some more villagers to trade with and also so that this town will feel a little bit more lively with a bunch of villagers running around. So I have already picked out a spot that I want it to be and I'm thinking right here behind the barn in a little circular shape as it is quite a small farm. I'm thinking we put a barn silo. And before we get started on that, I did get a little bit distracted while I was collecting the resources for this episode and played a little bit offline. So basically all I did was terraform this area a little bit so that it was a little bit more flat that way we could build on it significantly easier and then i also came over here and built a little cubby hole against our barn that if i flip up these trap doors it will expose the farm that is currently composting all the seeds that i've been collecting from the wheat farm and if i flick these trap doors back up i can easily access where i need to put the seeds in and i can also easily access where the bone mill will come out and besides that, the only other thing that I did offline was once again collect all the materials that we're going to need to build this silo villager breeder. That being said, we may as well get started. And if any of you guys are interested which farm I'm using, I'll link it in the description. And then we can go ahead and pick right down the center a spot to start building the farm. I'm thinking right here will do good because the farm is only going to be these like four blocks wide going straight up. So we should be able to build a nice little circular silo around this just fine. Next, we're going to go two blocks up a little bit. Bit more with our glass and we use glass just so the villagers don't die by suffocating themselves on some blocks next we can start adding some slabs right on top of this glass and complete this area with a fence attached to that half slab now all we're going to need to do is take out all of our beds and start adding them around the tower making sure that all the pillows on the beds are away from each other next we can start covering up the pillows with some carpet i already had some mossy carpet and didn't really care to shear my sheep so we're gonna go with that one today <laughs> and then finally all we need to do is go around between all the carpet and add a trapdoor. And all these trapdoors are doing is just holding those villagers in place right above this fence post. So we're not going to open or close them. Now this is technically the villager breeder all complete. Now I just need to make it easy for me to get some villagers in here. To do that, I can just outline this with some glass just like in this shape. And then we're going to go up by two on every single block except for two of them. And this right here is going to be the point of entry for our villager. So to make it a little bit easier to get the villager up on here, we're going to extend this glass by three and then start making our way down. And now that our glass pillar has made it to the floor, all we need to do is start adding some rails going from the bottom all the way to the top right next to where the villager is going to end up. Next, we're going to add our minecart at the end of here. And this is the point in the farm where we're going to need our villagers. So I'm going to take our cartography table that we have in our storage, because frankly, we're probably not going to use it for anything else. And then we can head over to the desert village and use this to lure over some villagers to our villager breeder. Here's villager number one, and I can't seem to get him in the minecart for some reason. So I'm actually going to try it without the rails and see if I can just lure him up to the top. Oh. Here he goes, and hopefully once he gets all the way up here, I should be able to just push him right in there. Just like that. And now I just need to get villager number two into the farm as well. He really just ran in there too. <laughs> and now we can go ahead and get rid of all of this glass. And when I mean all, I mean all of it. We're gonna bring it all the way back down to where it's completely on this layer with all the trapdoors. And now all we need to do to complete this villager breeder is give them a ton of food. So using the bone meal from the auto composting farm that I made earlier, I'm going to come in here and start turning some of this wheat field into a carrot field. Mainly because carrots are way, way, way easier to feed to the villagers than getting a bunch of wheat for some bread. So I figured this will be more efficient. And it looks like that was enough bone meal for us to cover at least half the farm with some carrots. So now I'm going to head over to the bone meal farm over here, grab ourselves some bones from downstairs and then bring them back over here to start bone milling all of these carrots until until I have a couple stacks of carrots to give to the villagers. All right and after a couple rounds I've got about eight and a half stacks so let's go ahead and give this all to these guys and I'm actually going to remove these two blocks down here so that when they drop down as babies they should drop into this little water bucket so they don't get hurt and then if they can't as babies walk out of there they should be able to as adults I'm really not sure how villager babies interact with water if I'm honest but they should be able to just walk out and start hanging out in the village right so if we give these villagers all of their carrots 
It should take about 12 carrots per villager, and then we should see a couple of baby villagers start popping up down here. So before we start covering it up with a silo, I actually want to make sure that it's working. So I'm going to sit here for just a moment until we see a baby villager pop up. And here we go. That worked perfect. He dropped down right in here and hopped out of the water unscathed. And I believe there was another one that popped out as well. Not sure where he went, but hopefully they are able to grow up safely because I really haven't villager proofed any of this area. So you stay safe, okay? I'm gonna make a silo to drop your parents in. It's, it's totally normal, I promise. Okay, and now for our silo, I think we're gonna go for all of the basic palette that we've been doing for the rest of our builds. And I think I'm actually going to start by surrounding this with some stairs so that we can always get back up to these guys, just like this. And just to make it even, I may as well surround it with some more slabs right here so we can go to any side. Hopefully this doesn't mess up the farm, but I don't see why it would. And now that we've got our little stand up there for us, we can start outlining the corners with some spruce logs. For some reason, one of them was born as a desert village and the other one was born as a plains villager so I really don't understand what's going on there but you know whatever works works I suppose Okay, so I've got my pillars set up and I did actually have to cut through the platform a little bit, but I think this should be a good circle for us to start off of. So I'm gonna go through and quickly strip all of these logs. And then I wanna come through and start making some lines with our andesites. That way it won't just be a straight pillar, it'll have some color breaking it up throughout. And then we can start filling the space between the andesite with some plain oak logs. Then we can quickly add a floor to the bottom here. That way they're not just like spawning on a pile of dirt. That just feels a little extra cruel. Then we can also add in a cute little door. And then finally we can add in that circular roof. To do that, I'm kind of winging it. So hopefully it ends up turning out okay. But we're just gonna start with two blocks right here with a stair in the middle. And then we're gonna start mixing some colors together as we go up two more blocks on top of that. And then we can take another staircase and put it right down the middle. And I actually lied, if we go two box tall it's going to make this way too tall so we're going to take that top layer off and instead replace it with some stairs to go inward and then we can start connecting all of these pieces by adding some blocks right here and then some walls and then once the walls are in place we can start adding some blocks right behind them and then against that wall we can go one more up in the middle and then i honestly don't know what i did but i got this shape so now i'm going to try to curve it in a little bit by adding some slabs right here and bringing it in with some stairs. And I think I'm gonna try to round it off by just connecting it like this and adding some slabs to fill in the gap. <laughs> okay, um, I think this is the stubbiest silo I have ever seen, but I don't think that it's bad. All right, so after a little bit more work and a few more details, it still looks absolutely stubby, but I think it looks a lot better. So if I give you a very quick tour, I added a pathway coming from the barn all the way to the front entrance way, where you can immediately see where the villagers are going to drop down into and they can just walk right out into the village. I also added a cute little table back there just so we can have a lantern for some light. And I also added a fence gate just so some villagers don't come up here once they've spawned in. Of course, some more lanterns up here and these guys. And I should have plenty of space up here to get any angle that I need to get the carrots to them, which means that these guys are nice and safe and lit up in here. So I shouldn't have to worry about them and they should be able to just run and create a ton more villagers for our village. And now that we have a ton of villagers at our disposal, I may as well tell you guys why I wanted to build a villager breeder in the first place. I may have mentioned it in past episodes, but I do really want to go underneath every single one of these builds and make sure that we have a ton of whatever villager is associated with that build underneath the building for us to trade with. So for example, this is our library, so our librarian villager is in here. So I would love to come underneath the library and start adding a bunch of librarians into a mini trading hall for us to trade with. And of course for that, we needed all those villagers. And that is going to help us make a ton of progress in this world. I would consider this episode a ton of progress as well, even if it's stubby progress. <laughs> I was really trying not to tower over the barn with the silo, but I think I just awkwardly made it the same height. But it's okay. It's still cute, it's functional, and it will help us progress. So if you did happen to enjoy this episode at any point in time, then consider subscribing, because I would love to see you guys in the next video. And speaking of next videos, here's a couple that I think you would enjoy. Also, if I take my armor off really quick, I have a new skin if you didn't notice. It's an archaeologist. It's for the new SMP coming out soon. It may already be out by the time this episode is out, so if it is, go check it out. It's gonna be really fun. Tons of cool SMP creators. I promise you'll love it. Okay, that's everything now. Bye!